of Mexico, there's a lot of fishing spots. People call springs, or they've labeled as springs. And I think that name comes from maybe central Florida having freshwater springs where freshwater is coming out from a giant hole. A lot of these are actually sinkholes, and one of the most popular in the Gulf of Mexico is the, the Green Banana. It's uh, pretty much 50 miles west of Sarasota, and a lot of people have it. And what it is, it's just a giant hole in the ground. It goes down to about 400 feet. It's been explored quite a bit, and it's definitely one of the most popular. And so if you're looking from inside the hole up, it's just a big opening, and that provides a lot of structure for fish and, and gives them, you know, a place to hide and, and very big natural relief. And sinkholes are kind of back in the news. If anybody's been following in Florida, we get a lot of them when ground kind of just collapses. Maybe the water table gives out and a big opening happens like this. This is the one that's most popular where somebody lost their lives in 2013 and it just reopened again for the third time. And from above, you can see it. I, I believe it's about 12 feet by 12 feet. And this one's on land, so you can imagine if it's in the water, all of a sudden you get this, you know, nice place for, for fish, a nice natural area of relief. And so the green banana, it's a big hole at the top, vertical walls around it, and it's been explored quite a bit. And there are many more like it out in the Gulf of Mexico that aren't quite as popular. And I'm sure there's some forming every day that we don't necessarily know about. They could be 100 feet wide. They could be 2 feet wide, just based on how Florida has a history of sinkholes forming. And so me being the explorer type, I love these natural types of bottom that many people probably haven't or will never see just because the ocean floor is, is largely largely unexplored. And so I want to you know, do what I can to see what's down there. So here's a sinkhole that's out in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, pretty far south in the Gulf. I'll just say that. It's still fairly un unknown. Uh, but you can see the bottom is about 200 feet, and then it drops to about 210 feet just based on what the recorder can see. I've accidentally sent my GoPro way into it. It goes much deeper than that, possibly as far as four, 500, 600 feet. Who knows? I don't know if this one's ever been seen by divers or had any type of professional survey equipment done uh, down on the bottom to see exactly how far it goes. But there's many spots like this out there, some not nearly as well known. But when you're fishing them, a lot of times if you're just sitting still, you'll just see a solid show, and then there's fish all over in the water column. These natural structures like this are a lot of the times the same type of fish that you'll find on wrecks. So you'll get your Goliath grouper, you'll get your you know barracudas, amber jack, all that. So this uh, this spring, uh, one day we, we pull up and immediately there's barracudas, there's sharks everywhere. Kind of the standard. We start chumming, we get yellowtails to the surface. So I, I'm like, well, you know what, I want to see what, what exactly this one looks like on the bottom. So I send the camera down. And so as it's going down... Barracudas everywhere. There's a couple sharks that you'll see. But the amount of fish is just crazy. So that, if you can make it out, is a big school of Jack Creval. There's probably 500 of them. And they're all big Jack Creval. So Barracuda, Barracuda, Jack Creval everywhere. These springs, a lot of times people will fish for African pompano. I think they mix in with the jack raval, but when you get the jack ravals like this, there's really not much else you're going to hook in the middle of the water column. And between the barracudas and the sharks, if you hook one of these, there's almost no chance you're going to get it to the surface. So jack raval is just kind of hanging out in the middle of the kudas. Nothing's really bothering them. If you hook one, though, they're immediately on it. And you'll see that kind of kind of later in this video as I go through when we're actually fishing, what it, what it looks like. So this coot is kind of curious, just kind of following the camera down as it goes to the bottom. I try to send it down slow when I'm on a spot like this just because I know there's so much activity in the middle of the water column. I love to see kind of what that looks like. So I don't send it down full speed. I, I kind of touch and go on the on the spool to, to send it down slower. So school of barracudas following it down. Almaco jack, something a little different. A few Almaco jacks there. Not a whole lot of amber jacks on this. I think the amber jacks in the summer will go deeper and this was in the middle of summer. So it's approaching the bottom here. 
And so now the sinkhole starts to come into view. The visibility isn't all that great, but if you can see the darkness, that's a big hole in the Gulf of Mexico floor. And then what you'll see is a bunch of mangrove snapper, a whole school. So that's a big one up above this school down here. And then there will be some mutton snapper as well that might be hard to make out. So there's a yellowtail snapper, but you can see a whole school of, of mangrove snapper. So camera at the bottom, I'm realizing it. So I don't want to lose it in the sinkhole. I've done that before. Give it a few cranks up. But tons of mangrove snapper. And then there's a shark coming in saying, why did I just hear something hit the bottom? Sharks out in these spots. Very curious. Always want to kind of see what's happening. So let me just go back a little bit where there's a good look at the edge of the sinkhole. Just barely miss sending it down in. But as you can see, vertical wall. This is a pretty big one. It's uh, fairly popular. A lot of people know about it. But the problem with fishing it is between the sharks and the kudas, if you were to hook one of these mangrove snapper, there's no chance you're going to get it to the surface because all the predators and also glass. So good look at the sinkhole there. Shark coming in. More jacks. Look like almacos. Then some amberjack do show up right there. And more sharks. Jack Ravel swimming with the shark. Nice yellowtail in the middle of it. And what's crazy is those sharks won't mess with any of these fish while they're down on the bottom. So I, I bring the camera up. There's a goliath. Just because I don't want to send it in case it's down in the middle of the sinkhole. I don't want to lose it. Which I've done before. So Mr. Goliath's like, what did I hear at the bottom? Same reason the shark came over. Wants to see what's What's this thing doing and down looking at me? So between all these predators, taxmen, as people like to say, there's almost no chance you're going to be able to get anything to the surface. So let me just speed through this slightly. When I bring it up, there's not a whole lot to see because I'm not getting a great view of the bottom with the, the poor visibility. But you can see the mangrove snapper is still sitting right on the edge there. I think you'd almost need a nighttime full moon bite to, to get these fish. Because in the daytime, you're going to struggle getting the mangroves. So there's a nice big dark shadow. I believe that's a shark in the middle of the hole. Probably hard to see when YouTube compresses these videos. So jacks, jack of owls, amber jacks. Not the biggest amber jack in the world, yellowtail snapper. And one more thing I want to show on the bottom video here. So there's another shark going through. So right there, first look at it. Cabrera snapper. Sitting in the middle of this big sinkhole in the Gulf of Mexico. Pretty cool. That's a, that's a, the smaller. I don't know if there's two or three here. But they do come back at one point. Let me just fast forward again. So there's the mangrove snapper. Yelltail snapper. So you're getting a little bit of everything here. Surprisingly enough, I did not see any red snapper, but there were muttons, yelltails, cubaras, and mangroves. I'm sure if it was down the bottom more, you'd see some lane snapper too. So you get all the, the snapper variety. More sharks. So you can see the outline of the sinkhole there. And then from the middle of it, one Cabrera snapper, big boy. Right behind it, another Cabrera snapper. It's two of them. And another shark for reference. And those are, those are large. You know, those are probably 50, 60, 80 pounds. I don't know exactly. But big ones. And I don't know if I'd want to be a diver going down on a spot like this, just with the amount of predators. I'm sure some don't mind the sharks, but that's, that's not for me. And so while we're fishing, I decide I'm just going to put the camera down. Just blow the boat. See kind of what it looks like. So we were chumming pretty heavy, and the yellowtails came right up to the surface. And so there's one hook there. 
Every time we'd hook one, a shark or a cuda immediately gangbuster straight after it, trying to trying to rip it away from us. No. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! No! 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 Ah, 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 ah. Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! Holy cow! Look at the shark! Hey, so you want to jump in here? No. Whew. That's a nice yellowtail. So you can see yellowtails on the surface. When you're chumming like this on a sinkhole or a wreck or something out in the deep gulf, you can get them to the surface, especially in the summertime. But if you have this many predators, the only chance you're going to have is if you turn them quickly and pull them straight into the boat. Once they start running drag, sharks, kudas, anything like that, it's going to be immediately chopping them in half, and then you're getting taxed. And we lost a couple to them, but we started using heavier spinners, you know, 6,000s, 8,000s. And luckily, these fish were eating 30-pound liters, so we were able to horse them pretty good and just kind of ski them into the boat. And next thing you know, in you know 30 minutes, we have 30 yellowtails. And didn't quite get our limit. Didn't really want to get our limit just because it's red snapper season. We had a bunch of red snapper and red grouper in the cooler already, and there's no, no point in overdoing it. Save the yellowtails for when those species are closed. So you can see yellowtails, barracuda. The the jacks were sitting a little deeper, so you're not seeing them down on this camera. There's probably about 50 feet of surface viz here. First, when I send the camera down to the bottom, and you see all the jacks, you know, midway in the water column, they were probably sitting at that 80 to 100 foot 100 foot mark. So lots of kudas, and so the way we were getting the yellowtails is a uh, Little white baits, live white baits, and just an eighth ounce hog ball, just enough to, to sink it and make it look wounded. That yellow tails that were sitting down, you know, 20 feet would come up near the surface or to the surface, and they'd say, Oh, look, free meal. If a bait stayed on the surface, the yellow tails didn't necessarily want to eat it. And they weren't really eating the squid or anything like that. They just seemed to want the live bait that day. And I think with that, the, the hog ball with the uh, using an owner circle hook, which is a little stronger. It was able to, to get them just that little bit of, you know, wounded look to the bait fish that the yelltails just couldn't seem to resist. So if I go forward slightly, we will hook one on camera. See these sharks just, I mean, just down there waiting. So many sharks. So there's five, six in frame at one given point there, and, and they're all big. Big sharks. Uh, crazy amount of them. Seven sharks in frame now. And so the sharks go down and come back up and go down and come back up. So you're ideally hooking these you know, yellow tails when they're when they're down. So if you watch here, see right there there's a hooked yellow tail. So these sharks so right there, sharks start getting the vibe and I see this one kind of starts going towards it, but I think by this point they were a little tired of us pulling yelltails away from them. So they weren't quite as, as fired up as they were at the beginning. But so many yelltails, so many sharks. Kind of show what we were doing on the surface and how we were using some of those little hog balls. And but yeah, you want a you want a medium or heavy spinner.